to me given a, a little demo on what we do here on a, a pretty regular basis now. Uh, one of the things we do a lot of is we uh, bring in whole animals here and uh, uh, mostly lamb and uh, pigs. You know, uh, we're not really bringing in whole cows or anything right now, but uh, you never know in the future we could do that. So, um, but the uh, question is, why do, why do we bring in whole animals? Why not just buy the, uh, the cuts um, you know, from the suppliers and everything? Well, there's a few reasons. One is, uh, you hear a lot about sustainability. And uh, <clears throat> you know, to really be sustainable, you, you want to use the whole animal. You want to use every part of it. Um, First off, I just like to I'm gonna take it off this point. I just like to look at my animal. First, I'll look it over just to make sure everything's as it should be. You know, there's no nothing wrong with it the inside. They always send them kidneys intact, so there are kidneys as well as the kidney fat in the in the carcass. Um, like I said, I've already looked this over. It's a it's a beautiful animal. Um, Check it for like broken bones, broken bones, any, any weird discoloring, yeah. any uh, any signs of of age that's it's been, been you know it's been killed. You have to yeah, uh, have to reject one or send one back because it's old no, or uh, haven't. They've all been they've all been beautiful. Uh, yeah, like I said, you know, right. um, it's just recently that they've uh, been inspecting them, so there's really rarely anything to worry about. But uh, you know, just just to take care of it, I just like to make sure everything is as it should be before I get into it. Although, as you can imagine, lots of bone, probably 50% bone. Um, this is fantastic braised. Um, it can be a roast. Done as a roast, it's a little more difficult to handle, being so bony inside. Um, braised comes right off the bone, so it's, it's a really nice little roast for two people. Um, you can debone it. It's a little difficult being uh, vertebrae in there. Lots of points and, and connections, tissue to the bone. So if you debone it, you end up with a, a pretty much a flap of meat, which is nice for uh, stuffing and that sort of thing. And if you were to do that, that's nice for a roast because the bones are, are taken care of. First thing I'm going to do is take off the legs. I'll start with the hind legs. As a has anyone ever taken down a carcass before? So, obviously there are, are joints just like any other animal. You can just kind of feel where it moves. That'll give you an idea of where the uh, hip bone is. And there are natural separations between muscles. And um, once you get in there, it's really easy to see where the separation is. You just follow that separation until you hit the bone. And this hind uh, quarter, the uh, the hip bone's pretty easy just to pop out. So first of all, I just cut right down the middle until you hit bone. Open it up. So there's a, there's a bone that runs right through the middle that you can get through with your knife. It's not real hard, so you can just get right in there. When you get it open, I like to open it a little bit more. Just trim some of this. This right here is what would be the, the skirt steak. So without cutting that too much, just get this out of the way a little bit. There's what would be in a retail market, leg of lamb often won't have the shank on it, so this would be your bone-in leg of lamb, or boneless if they choose to bone it out. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bone one leg later. We'll do the same procedure for the other side. 
Try to get close to the to the body. You know, not not too close, but there's once you get in here, you'll see the natural separation. So you see how it's it's not connected at all, all the way up into the to the shoulder. Put my hand all the way up into there. talking I removed this from the front so I while I'm cutting I don't cut it up anyone know what this might be fat from the neck you know what sweet breads is it's a thymus gland um, delicious although as you can see you don't get much off of each animal um, sweet breads you usually see from a calf um, which will be you know four to five times the size but, um, it's absolutely delicious, sautéed, fried, um, they're, they're fantastic, really delicate flavor. So here, taking out the kidneys and all the fat that's connected to it. Um, comes out pretty easily as you can see. So these are the kidneys, they've been cut. The, um, when they do the USDA inspection, they examine all the organs as well. Um, the kidney fat, kidney fat is, is um, it's beautiful. It's really firm fat. It's great for, I save it for, uh, if I'm making sausage with any lamb or anything, I'll add that back into it. Because lamb, most of the fat on the lamb is, uh, Extra, extra muscular, so it's on the outside of the muscles. There's very little marbling in lamb. Um, of course, uh, you know, if it were a, a grain-fed animal, it'd have more marbling, simply because grain creates more marbling. Um, but you know, not necessarily a better, better um, quality animal. So, any, any, um, of course, a lot of the fat goes into the ground. Off of each animal, we get a, a pretty good amount of ground that we can't really use otherwise. Um, but uh, it all gets used. You know, we make um, make terrines and pates, and, and uh, even we sell for our craft bar, which are our, our, um, kind of our happy hour during the week. We make lamb or burgers that go on our craft bar. Uh, make meatloaf sometimes. So um, everything gets used. But uh, all these, all these. This fat is fantastic for, for uh, sausage and, and that sort of application. So now I'm going to take off these bellies just so I can look and see into the interior a little bit better. And all this belly, skirts and everything are going to go into our ground. You can utilize them. You know, they're, uh, they're still a, a, a decent piece of meat. Nothing we sometimes we'll harvest them and use them like on our craft bar as well. Uh, but for this, I'm just going to take the whole belly off, and from there, you can see the uh, the skirt steak and, and all the other cuts that are there. Like I said, it's all going to the ground, so I'm not being real careful with it. So 
here, see the diaphragm. Diaphragm is, of course, what, what makes your lungs uh, expand and contract. This would be um, flat meat. You've seen it probably from a cow. Um, as you can see, this is you know an eighth of an inch thick. It's a uh, very um, rubber-like. That's what it does in its life. It just stretches and expands and contracts its whole life. So you know that that cut from a cow um, or a steer is a pretty good cut of meat. It's very flavorful. Not the most tender. But um, treated right, cut thinly, it's a really nice piece of meat. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this as well. We're going to our ground. Okay. So, you can see into the, to the cavity. Of course, this is where the racks come from, the rack of lambs. Um, here now you can see the tenderloins which would be filet mignon for, from a steer. Um, as you can tell, they're, they're pretty small. If we're, to, um, we're gonna take these out, but you know, you, uh, we'll usually use these for a, a small plate, an appetizer, paired with something, usually, simply because you only get, you know, probably eight orders out of this totally for a small plate. Um, so before I get into that, I'm gonna, this. So I'm going to cut the rib cage down the middle. I'm going to take off some of these ribs, which would be the uh, spare ribs if it were a steer. With the racks, take some of this breast off. So with the racks, um, generally you see eight bone racks. I like to do more simply because the the, the eye of the um, loin gets smaller as you go down, but it's still a beautiful, um, beautiful cut. It's still rack of lamb. Um, it just gets a little bit more fat to um, lean ratio. So I'm going to take off these spare ribs right there. Perfect. So, you might recognize this. Spare ribs, when you get it, they have a little bit of the uh, um, skirt along the bottom. So we use these on the craft bar as well. Um, half of this will probably be in order. Craft bar, like I said, is happy hour, but um, these are delicious. Really, as you can see, once you get down, there's not a lot of meat on it, but uh, for a little bar poo, it's perfect. Thank you. Okay, so you get a better view of what's going on in here. So now I'm going to remove the saddle. So, this is the end of the loin that travels all the way down the animal. As you can see now, like I talked about before, if I cut it here, I'd be losing three inches or so of that loin, which we don't want. So I'm going to take this saddle, we'll cut it right by the back of the last rib. Talk about an artisan style, craft style, just a guy in his hacksaw here. <laughs> One of my favorite things. No power tools. So, got down the bone. Once again, so 
once you're here with this, um, like I said, we like to just take the loin off. Um, there are different cuts you can do. You can do a, um, called an English roast. Cut it every vertebrae, in between the vertebrae, and you'll have a, about a one inch thick roast that has uh, a loin on each side. That's beautiful for just just serving as if you would a uh, rack of lamb, however your tent likes, uh, you know. Can be braised, but this is not the best. The lines are far better, just serves, uh, you know, rare, mid rare. Um, so I'll go ahead and take these lines off right now. I'm just gonna cut right down the spine. So I just run down one side of the bone. The spine has a bones that come out the side and one that comes in the top so you can feel the top backbone so I run down that until I hit bone again same on the other side and once I hit bone I'll follow those bones out away from the spine. So, there's your loin. There's a skin on loin. I'm going to leave the skin on until I decide exactly what I want to do with it. Um, skin rendered nice and slow without cooking the meat too much. It's, it gets really nice and crispy and beautiful, so I like to leave those until I really know exactly what I'm gonna be doing with it. You know, once again, this piece of meat right here is a, it's just a one nice, beautiful muscle, and there's, it's so versatile. Um, I've stuffed it, you know, you butterfly it out, put whatever you want, put, um, you know, pine nuts, poha berries, uh, herbs, cheese, whatever whatever you feel like, you know, and uh, just roll it up, truss it, sear it, finish in the oven. So you just run your knife down the bone, you know, the bone, pretty much in any butchery really, if you know a little bit about the anatomy, the bone will be your guide as far as taking it down, for the most part. Some bones are easier than others to get around. When you're deboning the shoulder, the shoulder blade is a little bit difficult the way the bone is shaped. Okay, other side. So later, I'll go back and take off any other scrap pieces to go into the, the ground pile. Right now, we'll take off the tenderloins. And once again, fat is a good thing, you know, some lean, lean meat on this animal, so all the fat goes in the ground as well. You know, we end up with probably close to an 80-20 as well. So, just like on the back for the loin, for the tenderloins, do the same thing as run your, your knife down. The bone in the middle comes up again as well. Just run your knife down one side of that. So you'll hit the bone that comes out and you'll just keep running your knife along it. So this is your tenderloin, <coughs> which would be you said your filet mignon. You can tell, pretty small. This is probably six ounces. Um, in the past, we've made a small plates with one little ounce and a half medallion of that and a piece of skirt steak, um, just simply grilled. Uh, you know, there's there's a ton of things you can do with it. Just like the marinade a little bit, um, olive oil. Rosemary's classic, 
Um, but you can put whatever you want, rosemary, garlic. It's up to you how you want to marinate it. It doesn't need much um, as far as tenderizing. Uh, the skirt is a little bit different. When we do the skirt, we'll, um, before it's served, we'll cut it really nice and thin. Because if you don't, it can be a little bit chewy. Um, very flavorful though. Uh, to harvest the racks, some people go four bones in. I like to go two bones in. And so I'll count two bones, make my cut. Okay, so I've taken off this. Of course, the neck was right here. Still a lot of meat on this. This can also be used as a roast. Um, not quite as nice as the neck. Much more difficult to debone. Um, this, I'll debone it and just throw it into the, uh, the ground. So, once again, I'm going to put this with the ground to be deboned. Great stew, though. Yeah. Absolutely. Just like the At neck. At times, we will take. <laughs> pieces like this and the neck. We'll braise them and pick them. You can make cassoulet. Um, at that point it can be a stuffing for, you can stuff it back into lamb. Uh, you know, we make a, a farce. Yeah, farce. Any kind of stuffing. Um, manicotti. You know, any, any, anything that you can stuff, that can be a beautiful stuffing and add different flavors to it. Once again, uh, I love I love putting poha berries with lamb. I think they complement each other really well. A little bit tart, a little bit sweet. Um, and uh, that tartness is really nice with the rich lamb. So, here we are. Getting down to the racks. So, different, uh, different size animals will we'll kind of determine how far, how many bones I want to leave on my racks. This being a little bit smaller one. I think I'm gonna leave it just like this. So, that being that. Now, once again, we'll cut down each side of the spine. Just like we took the loins off, we're not gonna remove them entirely. Let's see it better from this side. So you can see the loins bones, that's your, your rack of lamb, that's your lamb chop right there. So we'll run our knife down, remove it from the bone, not entirely, just enough so it's away from this what they call the chine bone, so it's easy to get off of the, off of the spine itself, which can be a pain in the butt, unless you have a bandsaw. So my initial cuts, I'm not trying to cut all the way down trying to make a line basically to see where I'm going to follow. So I pretty much removed this, as you can see, away from the spine. And this would be, these are the loins. So now, job is to cut the ribs along the spine, keeping them attached to the loin, and there would be your, your uh, rack. And I'm going to be cutting right here, straight down, so you're, you're out of the window. I'm just going to cut one bone at a time. While I'm cutting, I'm using my thumb and pulling that muscle away so I'm not cutting the, the loin as I go down. So, now that's more recognizable as a rack of lamb, right? Everyone knows that. So, 
I'm gonna clean these bones up a little bit more. Hold that right there. so you can just crack it. Okay. Okay, now to get to the IC rack done retail, I'm going to this down a little bit. Again, like I spoke about earlier about how how different muscles and everything come apart easily if you're following the natural seams. Same right here. You can, you can see it just pretty much will, will come off just with a little bit of pressure. Just run your knife along the bone. Take this cap off. So now, depending on what you want to do with it, you can French it. No one knows what Frenching is, right? Frenching is, um, I'll show you. Frenching is just simply taking these little riblets out of the, from between the bones. There are many techniques to frenching. Once you get these little rivets out, some people use a um, string, butcher's twine, wrap it around it and it strips the meat off. Um, for me, you know, that's it's a little hit or miss for me. It works. That's definitely not my favorite technique. Depending on how clean you want the bones. If you want the bones super, super clean, which you know it's not a, it's nice, but it's not that big a deal. A lot of times you'll run your knife along the bone and that makes it easier for this, uh, this, um, stomach lining or, or uh, cavity lining to come off. It peels off the bones, but for me I just just take these rivets out. And then you can just scrape those bones free of excess meat. And they become pretty clean at that point. So we'll save that for a little bit later. But there's your, your rack of lamb. I'll finish this one later. Save these, these all go into the grind. So that is broken down into uh, the main components. You have, uh, you have all your components. Now you're ready to do what you want with it. At this point, you, you, you're thinking about your choices with with how you want to utilize this. Um, you know, do you want to keep the leg whole, roasted like that? Of course, anything bone in, you get better flavor off of. Um, definitely more difficult to serve in a restaurant style. If you're cooking it at home, 
I would make it just like that. Um, I'd marinate it for a, a couple of days. Um, for me, I would just put a lot of rosemary, fresh oregano, a bunch of garlic, maybe some balsamic. Let that sit for a, a day or two. And then um, I would just put it in a high oven for a couple of minutes just to get some nice crust and color on it. And then really low oven, like 200 degree oven until, until it's done. You know, that leg you wanna cook, you wanna cook it through. Leg, as you know, gets a lot of work, so those muscles are, are tough muscles and a lot of uh, connective tissue. Um, beautiful piece of meat, but that's something that you, you uh, unless you're taking it down to each muscle, it's something that you wanna cook past medium, medium or past. Uh, you can take them down to each muscle, which is, um, once again, like I said, the muscles, once you look at them, you get in there, they kind of guide you along how you want to uh, break it down. Um, so, we'll uh, go ahead and debone one of the hind legs. So this is the first one we took off. Everyone, here's the ball joint, connects to the hip. Find where that bend is. It doesn't bend a lot right now, but you can see right here is the knee. So, work from the inside, it's the outside. Work from the inside. You're gonna follow this bone, the ball joint, straight to the knee. And there are different muscles that you can uh, get in between to make it a little, little crazier. Not that it really matters, um, but you know when you're getting in there, you don't want to, you don't want to be just cutting however you want to get it. You want to make as few cuts as possible to get to that bone. But you know what? We'll take um, before we do that, we'll take the shake off. So. Of course, their front and rear shanks. The rear ones uh, being larger, definitely. But I'll cut this. Everyone see this muscle? This right here is your shank. So I'm gonna cut that right in the middle of the knee. Cut to the bone. Okay, there's your shank. For uh, for service, These thick, heavy tendons, they go into the stock. They won't go into the grind. For service, I'll cut this off. So it'll be... Okay, there's your lamb shake. Everyone knows lamb shake, right? Like I said before about this, um, muscles used a lot, a lot of connective tissue, um, beautiful for braising. New uh, Zealand Australian lamb also 100% uh, uh, grass fed. Uh, American lamb grain fed and that's been done because grass fed uh, a little gives you a little bit stronger flavor. Are, are you familiar with grass fed beef but you really uh, know the difference in taste if you taste the uh, grass fed beef versus grain fed? The grass fed's a lot beefier flavor. It has a stronger flavor. And uh, once you get used to that, you can hardly go back to grain fed because it just tastes very quad lamb and everything. Same thing with lamb. American lamb, uh, they started using uh, grain to feed it just to mellow out the flavor a little bit. Americans tended to not like the stronger flavor of grass. Um, we like it here. We're, we're so used to grass fed animals that uh, we, we don't really like grain fed. 
uh, because it just takes land to us. So um, the flavor profile of this not quite as strong as uh, New Zealand and Australian. Uh, they tend to uh, let them grow a little bit bigger and older in uh, New Zealand and Australia, so that uh, with lamb as they get older, they uh, start getting stronger in flavor until they're a year old when they become uh, officially known as mutton, which is very strong if you've ever had mutton. Uh, that goes uh, over a lot of people's uh, threshold for gamey flavors. We do a special this month, uh, lamb, so it's a nose to tell thing. On Mondays we do uh, um, different cuts every Monday, so we've done leg lamb, so we, we took all our legs and we're able to save enough to do that one Monday. We did shoulder last Monday. Um, we have shank coming up this coming Monday, uh, and then rack of lamb at the end, the grand finale. Uh, so that's kind of what you have to do. It is very difficult to source uh, locally like this. It's just um, outside of beef, which is dwindling again because of the, uh, the drought. Um, it's real hard. It's hard for bigger operations to you know, try to use uh, products like this. Um, smaller and more flexible like us, you know, we can make it work. 